Okay, this is a very quick and dirty recording uh, of the run-through of the multiple choice for Unit 1, Physics on the Go, AS level from Edexcel. And this paper is from May 2014. Okay, select the answer in which both quantities are vectors. I've crossed out speed, mass, time, and power because they're all not vectors. And that leaves only B as being the possible answer here. Tennis ball hits a wall perpendicularly with a speed of 4 meters per second, rebounds at the same speed. Which one is the correct one? We've got 4 meters per second going towards, 4 meters per second coming back. V minus U is the change of velocity. And the original velocity is the way we take to be positive. So V then coming back is going to be minus 4 and we're subtracting the original plus 4, which gives us minus 8. So B is the correct answer. A mass of half a kilogram, or 0.05 kilograms, sorry, is lifted at a slow steady speed with a 5 watt electric motor. The height the mass rises in 8 seconds is found by, well, it's one of these, so we've got powers work over time. Work will be the potential energy gained by the object. Time will be how long it takes. Rearranging that for H, get R times time over mg, which is going to be 5 times 8 over 0.05 times 1, not b. The child slides down four frictionless slides, a, b, c, d. The speed the child at the bottom uh, of all of the slides is given by v, a, v, b, v, c, v, d. Choose the correct statement. Which one of these relationships is true? Well, the drop in height is the only factor here. We've got a frictionless slide, therefore the velocities at the bottom of all these are going to be the same. Spring with a spring constant of 140 newtons per meter is extended in elastic potential energy of 1.6 meters. The extension is found using this. Okay, so elastic potential energy is half k x squared. So x is the root of 2 times the elastic potential over k, which is 2 times 1.6 so we're looking for the root of that answer D. Q and R are two drops of different fluids which are in place on the end of the pile and the pile is going to be tilted. The less viscous one is going to run further and the more viscous one is going to run a shorter distance. So R must have more viscosity than Q and so answer A is correct. Small objects falling at terminal velocity in a large container of oil, which diagram correctly represents both the magnitude and direction the force is acting on the object as it reaches terminal velocity. Well, the problem with this one is that these two are about the same size as W, so there's much more upward force here, which can't be true. Um, D and W are about the same size, which means D plus W is again too much. Uh, D here acts down which, if it's a falling object, can't be true. And here we have them both made smaller so that when they add together they can have the same size as W. So C is the correct answer. A force is resolved into two components, F horizontal and F vertical, at right angles to one another. Um, which of these is true? Decreasing theta increase, which is, which is not true, sorry. Decreasing theta increases the magnitude of FH, yes it would. Increasing theta increases F vertical, yes it would. Um, F horizontal and F vertical have magnitudes that when added together give a total equal to the magnitude of F. No, that's not true. And F horizontal and F vertical have magnitudes that when added together give a total greater than F. And you can see I've added them together here and they are greater. This red is the same time as F. This one is the same size as that vertical, and I've added it in a couple of was not also their total magnitude would be greater than the magnitude of that. So C is the correct answer, it's the one that's not true. Car mass M, travelling at the velocity V, comes to rest over the distance D in the time of P, and the constant friction force acting against one of these. Well, this is work causing a loss of kinetic energy, so force times distance is half mv squared, F on its own would be mv squared. Here we have a free fall where we're dropping this card down to the light gate and we're asking which one will produce a more reliable value of G. 
Dropping the card from a greater height will Im will create uh, two velocities that are closer to each other, which won't give us any difference. Um, dropping the card from rest won't necessarily improve anything here. Make the card shorter, that will reduce the times and therefore increase the errors. Move the light gates further apart, that interval time will increase if you move the light gates further apart, and so that should improve the result. And that's just a summary of the answers. Okay.